I think we should pray a following prayer. And here's what I mean by that. You're here because you follow Jesus or want to learn more about following Jesus, right? Who knows most about following Jesus? Jesus does. It's not me. It's not you. It's him. So let's ask him, Lord, what's my next step? What do you want to teach me today? How do you want to impact and use my life for your glory? Let's ask him, Lord, we're here to meet with you. And yes, we love getting together and singing and praying and having a potluck, but Jesus, it's really all about you. So we ask in faith that you would show us our next step in following you, that you give us the faith to take it, and Lord, that you would never leave us alone. And Lord, that we'd be able to feel your presence in our lives, know your peace and your joy. And Lord, give us your amazing love that flows in us and through us to those around. Jesus, today's yours, and so are we. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, thank you for being here, and uh, we're just getting started. Some fun things are going to happen next, and uh, we've been in a series on the 12 disciples, and our assumption is that Jesus did not just call people to follow him 2,000 years ago. He still does, and so we've been hearing a story from somebody every week, and this morning, we're going to hear from Miss, Mrs. Annie Barber. Would you welcome her as she comes up? Oh, yeah. Welcome. Well, thank you. you got the green going on. That's good. I didn't, I didn't on the actual day, but... Yeah, that's right. It counts. Today, so... I think it's on. It's just that this isn't on. <coughs> It's the voice that's not on? The voice is not Yeah, on. you're all right. So, so, Annie, thank you for doing this today, and thank you for faithfully serving and, uh, and being um, the backbone of our band. So would you thank her for serving? <laughs> tell, it, tell us a little bit about how Jesus called you and uh, kind of the, the road. What's it been like saying yes to him? I came to faith uh, when I was five, and, and straight up, Annie, come and follow me, yes, Lord. Hmm. Um, and then, for those of you that have walked with the Lord for, for any length of time, you know that then there are the, those sort of markers along the way, where he gives you a little bit of insight into what you said yes to. Um, so I want to just share a, a little, one of those stories for me. Uh, and it, it shaped me and continues to shape me that this particular story um, reminds me of a lot of different things. We'll see what it reminds you of. But when I, <clears throat> I came to faith when I was five, um, if, you, if you read my book, I feel like this is sort of redundant, but um, I loved my childhood. I, I was completely in love with my mom and dad. I was completely in love with, with my family of faith, where we were every time the doors opened. Um, it was a really idyllic, wonderful childhood, and I loved the Lord. Even as a kid, I, he just gave me that gift of being able to truly love him. Uh, in my early teens, my dad left my mom, and that was a huge, uh, abrupt uh, difficulty. Um, my church, I understand now, at the time though, uh, they didn't close themselves off to mom and I, my, my other siblings were already out of the house. But when we would come back to church, they just didn't know what to do with us. Um, so I understand now, no, there was no ill will, there was no lack of love, uh, but we weren't set up to um, help a family transition through what my family of faith was going going through a key family in the church. My dad was a deacon. Um, we, were, we were extremely core in the church, and so now we didn't look the same anymore, and there just wasn't a place for us. And that was, a, that was almost as equal a personal tragedy to me. Uh, so now my core family uh, had, had disintegrated, and now my, my peripheral family of faith uh, was also gone. <clears throat> so 
fast forward eight years, eight really difficult years for this you know, creative melancholy that just kind of went inward and isolated. That's just my sort of natural response to all of that. When I was 21, and this isn't a big dramatic story at all, but there came a day, now I should say two in, in, in first and then boom, we'll finish the background part. Um, when my dad left, uh, a giant wall made of titanium uh, shot up right around my heart. That was it. Mm. And he was my hero. So I don't know how that happens, but that happened. And I was extremely disillusioned as a kid, not able to process the sort of what seemed like a distancing of my church family. Uh, so there were a lot of walls, a lot of uh, just sort of buried bitterness, uh, just disillusionment with life. So now let's fast forward. I'm, I'm 21, I'm sitting in my apartment here in town in Thousand Oaks, and I just suddenly am aware that all of that, what was now eight years of sort of build up and, and sludge, was gone. Um, and it wasn't a dramatic moment, except as it dawned on me, wait, all of that pile of, of build up that I'd been, that really had been my undergirding through all my teen years, really, it, it had just vanished. And I realized that the Lord had delivered me. He just, he didn't, he didn't even uh, take it off my shoulders. It, it, it didn't exist anymore. Hmm. So a thing I used to be able to grab hold of for support, there was nothing to grab anymore. That was a very unique situation. But at the same time, and this is where we're getting to the Lord showing me a deeper level of what does it mean to follow me. At the same time, he poured into my heart tenderness and compassion for my dad was a complete miracle. Mm -hmm. And for my family of faith at large, because I had not lived in the town I grew up in for a long time, but where, where I, I went, I would look at a situation like this, organized Western church life, and I went, I don't fit there anymore. Suddenly, in that instant, part of my deliverance was also a filling of tenderness and compassion and mm -hmm. desire for my family. So, I look at that as what it is, a, a true, full deliverance and filling. It was instantaneous. I, wasn't, I wouldn't have even known to ask for it. I probably wouldn't have wanted to ask for it. And, but the Lord had appointed in his, uh, in his kindness, there would come a day, a moment, an instant, when suddenly I would realize that that big thing that had been accumulating, it just wasn't there anymore. And not only was it not there, but now I was full of tenderness and love and desire for my family. And we're all called to contribute to our people. Um, but I was able to go back to my dad. Uh, I could even ask him anything about those times because I had a lot of questions. You know, what, what, you know, what was happening in you? What caused you to do all of that? And we could talk about it like two adults without any there was no triggering, no, um, just a true desire to learn uh, what was going on with this man that I loved. Um, and, and then with regards to my church family, uh, I felt like the Lord uh, turned me toward my family again, you, and said, here's where I want you to make your, hmm. here's where I want you to make your big contribution with your life. It was a calling it was a sort of a solidifying of a calling and a refocusing of a calling to my people. Not everybody goes back home. I mean, we're all called to one another, but not everybody gets called back home, but I did, for sure. Um, and so I, I come, and it's, it's a complete work of the Holy Spirit in me. I come into this group of people. Um, and I think you know, if you know me at all, how much I love you. Uh, the Lord has just deposited a a love that overflows in me for you. You're my family. You're my brothers and sisters. We're, we're siblings, and I didn't get to choose you any more than my biological family, but in the Lord's, uh, in, the, in, in what is right in the eyes of God, he made us family, and I want to move toward you. And I assume now, because I had the experience when I was a kid, that we're going to hurt each other. 
That, that's an assumption that I now have and I have uh, experienced. I've hurt, I've been hurt. Um, but that uh, is irrelevant in me acting on my call to invest the best of who I have in you. Uh, we, don't, we don't enter and cultivate relationship with, that, with each other, hinging it all on uh, as long as we don't get hurt. Mm. We cultivate and, and, and grow relationship because we're brothers and sisters. Um, and that doesn't ever change. And we expect hurt. We expect uh, us to, to sometimes even destroy each other. And then we, we re-up and we remember who we are and we come back in and uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, um, he uh, bridges gaps and he heals wounded hearts um, and he binds us back together again. Um, so that's really, that's really my story. Just one of those times when the Lord sort of turned, refocused, didn't recall, but just solidified and gave me a little more insight into a very specific call on my life. I love it. Thank you, Annie. Would you thank her for sharing? <clears throat>